Hey folks, thanks for joining us. Today I'm going to be talking about projectors, and not just any kind of projectors, but extremely cheap projectors. Now, to go through this, I thought it'd be interesting to talk about the thought process and then give you my opinion on whether you should or should not buy a $70 projector. And I know this has happened to a lot of folks, you know, we've come on as online stores and you're looking for a projector and you see all these big prices, $999, $899, you see something for $500 and you're like, oh man, that's a steal, is it even good? And then eventually you start to see $250 or $150 or, you know, these really crazy low, you know, $118, these crazy low projectors that claim all these kind of specs. They say, you know, 6,500 lumens. Uh, HD 1080p support, 169 bucks, and you're like, there's no way on earth that could be any good. Now, the fun thing was last week I had the chance to record the new projection mapping workshop for the HQ Pro, and as a part of that, I thought it would be a nice challenge to also go ahead and try to do it with one of these projectors. So this projector you're seeing on screen, which is uh, hilariously I find called the Ape Man 2021 upgraded projector. It advertises 4,500 lumens, 1080p HD, 5,500 hours lamp life, and all kinds of extra features. So one of the fun things I thought today would be to actually tell you how my Ape Man 2021 performed in my projection mapping workshop, because I think there's actually a really good place for these when folks are learning to deal with projectors, you're learning to projection map, uh, and I can go ahead and say we have no affiliation with any of the companies we're talking about today, but these could be very useful if you're just getting started and don't have access to a lot of equipment. So the first thing we're going to do is actually just talk about some of the specs that they talk about on the listing. Then I'm going to talk about the actual hardware unit and what it has going for it and what it doesn't have going for it. And at the end, I'll give you my recommendation on who maybe will benefit from this and who should definitely avoid this. So the first thing we're going to notice is 400, 4,500 lumens. Now let me tell you, 4,500 lumens is nothing to shake a stick at. That is a decent amount of brightness, especially when most BenQ models, most Optoma, most ViewSonics that are in that budget range, you know, they're going to be advertising around 2,300 lumens, 3,000 lumens, 3,500 lumens. You know, that's kind of the ballpark for those projectors that are around five to $700. So to get one that was $70 for 4,500 lumens, sounds too good to be true. I would actually say it is too good to be true. When I was going through and recording our workshop, at no point did I think to myself, wow, this is 4,500 lumens. Um, I would randomly put this around the 2,000 lumen mark. It's definitely a lot more than you're gonna see coming out of Pico projectors. You know, it's not 100 lumens, it's not 200 lumens but it is for sure not 4,500 lumens. And this is something you might want to be careful about with the projection industry as well. There's lots of reports that say, you know, different companies measure their lumen values in different ways to try and get the best result they can for their projector. So always take these with a grain of salt, especially on these lower end projectors. So I would say this is, you know, in that 1,500 to 2,000 range when I was testing it, maybe up to 2,500 if the content was really forgiving, but definitely not 4,500 lumens. The next thing we got to look at is 1080p HD. And I've mentioned this before in a couple videos where I talk about choosing projectors. One of the really important things you have to do is look through the specifications because projection projectors often have two kinds of resolutions. One that's called the native resolution, and that's what's actually the amount of pixels on the chip itself. And then they're going to have an input resolution. And the input resolution is what resolutions are supported, you know, over HDMI or VGA going into the projector. Now, the reason that's important is because a projector could put, you know, a nice little scalar chip inside of the input. So that way it can have all the way up to 4K input resolution, which actually, surprisingly, the Ape Man 2021 can support 4096 by 2160 as an input. But... If we start to scroll down a little bit, and let's let's scroll down to the specifications here, and you can see a lot of these cheaper projectors sometimes make it hard to find the resolution, because here it says scanner resolution, full HD 1080p. It is definitely not a 1080p projector. You keep scrolling down, you keep scrolling down, and eventually, if you do end up finding some specifications, 
This is the model I have, the LC350. The native resolution is only 800 by 480 pixels. So that means regardless of whatever you plug in, if you plug in 1080p, you plug in 4K, you plug in 720p, doesn't matter. The internal system is gonna take that and scale that down because this only physically has 800 by 480 pixels on its output. Now 800 by 480, really not great. You know, especially when 1280 by 720 is so common, even on uh, a lot of budget projectors. But I will say 800 by 480 didn't impede me trying to teach this workshop, especially if you're just doing very simple projection mapping tests. You know, if you're using Cantan Mapper, you're trying to learn how to use Cam Schnapper. Uh, all of those things work just fine with 800 by 480 resolution. The only thing I found was that I couldn't fill the scene with too many objects. I had to try and just get a few big, uh, a few big objects in the scene, get as many pixels onto them as possible, and we'll come back to that in a moment. And then, you know what? The workflow actually worked out quite fine. So 800 by 480 is definitely not the kind of resolution that you want to take to a show or a club, unless it's some really small experiment that you're doing. Maybe you're just doing it for your own band. Maybe you're not interested in resolution. You just kind of want to spray colorful light everywhere. It could work, but it's definitely a pretty low resolution. Contrast ratio is another big thing that you should always keep an eye out for. And what you're going to notice is a lot of cheap projectors have very bad contrast. You know, they're, I'm surprised they're even willing to sell this 1000 to 1. Let me tell you, this 2000 to 1 looked pretty bad. Uh, you know, we're going to cut in some of the clips from the workshop that got recorded and you'll be able to see there is not a lot of contrast there. The colors are pretty washed out. Despite my best efforts going through the menu, trying to, you know, set everything, tweak everything, see if I could really like squeeze out any more juice out of this lemon. Um, and it does a pretty good job, you'll see, even uh, in just getting the content up. You can still tell what the content is, but it's probably not the kind of thing that you want to take to paying gigs because I think people will probably be disappointed with that. So aside from that, you know, there aren't too many specifications you really have to worry about. You know, display technologies, they're all different, but on low-end projectors, you're almost always going to get LCDs. Um, so with that said, I think a great thing to do would be actually look at this unit and let me talk a little bit about how the unit actually performs in real life. So the first thing I'll say is that it is very, very tough to focus this projector. Uh, and immediately one of the things I noticed was how cheap feeling a lot of these focus knobs and rollers are, especially the Keystone one. Uh, and they're kind of unintuitive where the Keystone one seems to indicate that it can Keystone in both directions but the knob gets stuck, so you can only keystone it in one direction. And this was one of the most challenging things with working with this projector, was actually finding a good balance between being able to move my projector freely and being able to focus it. Because this isn't a short throw projector, so it really was not capable of getting too close to my geometry that I was mapping and still letting me focus. So I basically had to let the focus decide how close I could get, which for my purposes meant that I was wasting a lot of pixels spilling over the geometry that I was mapping. Aside from that, another annoying thing is it doesn't have the compliant mount points on the bottom that you're gonna see from a lot of better projectors. That means if you did really wanna experiment with mounting this, trying out different projection mappings, that's gonna be a little bit difficult because all it really has is an quarter inch thread on the bottom. Quarter inch thread might be able to hold this up, but it's still, you know, it's not a Pico projector, so it's still heavy enough where you would really have to tighten up your mount to hold this in a very uh, specific position. Luckily for me, I just put this kind of on a little base plate and that was more than enough for me, but it's definitely something to be aware of. I would say other than that, the fan was pretty loud and pretty whiny uh, because you can't see actually, they did a good job keeping it in a compact case but with all things compact comes the noise of fans. It wasn't terrible. You know, if you take it to a club or a venue or something like that, and you're just trying out some VJing for a night, you definitely won't hear it. But I can tell you working in my quiet office with this on for a long amount of time really starts to drill into your ears a little bit. Now, it does have a pretty decent set of connectivity on it. Uh, I didn't try most of them. I only really went with the HDMI in, and I had no trouble with that HDMI input. I didn't try the speakers. I really didn't try much else of the features. One thing that 100% didn't work is the remote. Uh, for some reason, I don't know if the IR receiver is not working or if the remote is defective, but 
The annoying part was there were some features on the remote that I couldn't access within the native menu. And that made it a bit tricky because I couldn't do things like Zoom, which would probably would have been very helpful. But aside from that, you know, it's not terribly built. It is a sturdy little box, but I could definitely see wear and tear affecting it. So this is not the kind of projector you want to get if you actually want to do some active gigging with it. If it's something that sits in your office and gets some occasional use, or it's a test projector that, you know, you mount it once and you just have a stage where you can try projection mapping some stuff. Not a bad projector for that, but definitely these kind of focus knobs will easily get gummed up with dust, uh, grease, and anything like that, and I could definitely see them stop working. So with that said, you know, who is this projector good for? And I think one of the really interesting things for me from trying this projector was just seeing how much the floor of projector technology has been raised. Because I remember five years ago, seven years ago, you would spend you know, two or three hundred dollars on a Pico projector, and it was garbage. You could even spend four hundred dollars on, a, you know, a low-end BenQ, and it was all right. But now you can spend seventy dollars on a projector, and it's really not terrible. You know, the image came out; it has colors. They're not the best, like we mentioned earlier. It can focus. You know, it has a tiny bit of keystoning. It has connectivity. You know, if you wanted to put a uh, I believe you can even put a TF card or an SD card in here, VGA, HDMI, you can plug in a USB drive and read from it. So it really could be a great thing if you're just trying to learn how to do some of these projector workflows. You know, if you're trying to learn projection mapping for the first time and you don't have access to equipment, you know, one of the things I always see stopping folks from getting into projection mapping is the cost of buying projectors. You know, especially if you start thinking about the fact that, oh, well, you know, I need, a, I need a projector, so am I looking at spending $500, $600 on a projector? And then when you start thinking about learning projection mapping, you know, something that always gets people stuck is what happens when I have multiple projectors. Now, if you're talking about, you know, now I need two of these, I'm spending $1,000 or $1,500, you know, those can become very expensive workflows just to learn. But I think with something like this, and by no means is the ape man the best one, you know, if you go on... Amazon or any of your kind of favorite online stores and look up projectors. There are tons of very, 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 very cheap projectors. And I think they're all going to be in this similar ballpark. They're going to be plastic. They're going to be a bit cheap feeling. They're not going to have great colors. They'll probably be, you know, exaggerating on how many lumens that they actually output. Their native resolution is probably going to be much lower than what they advertise in the actual title of it. But with all that said, these could be a great learning tool for anyone just getting involved with projection mapping. And I can tell you that firsthand when we recorded this workshop, I used a $70 projector and I used my five-year-old laptop and was able to record Cantan Mapper, Camp Schnapper workflows start to finish. So with that said, I hope this has been interesting. You know, I've always seen these cheap projectors and hadn't seen anyone really talk about them. So it's nice just to you know, unbox it, get a feel for it. And I will be keeping this one in my office just for simple experiments. So hopefully that helps you out and can get you started projection mapping. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.